There have been ample discussions about the COVID pandemic and the actions that were taken by the Canadian and provincial governments. Well, today we're speaking with Nadine Wilson, MLA for Saskatchewan Rivers, who has launched a petition for a commission of inquiry into the Saskatchewan government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. She joins me now. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nadine from Regina. Thank you, Jeanette. I'm in the Saskatchewan Legislative Assembly building today because we're in session, uh, the 29th session of Saskatchewan. So I'm sitting currently in opposition from the Saskatchewan Party government, who I had previously been with for 12 years. Okay, wow. And I know that you have uh, launched this petition on your website. So before we get into that, tell me about some of the things that you've been seeing across Saskatchewan since the pandemic started. You've been there for a while. You were mentioning you've been in the legislature for 14 years. So you've seen a lot. That's true, Jeanette. Uh, 14 years of, of listening to the people because we are the servants of the, of the public. But the last two years has shown me there's been some, some changes in what's happening in the world and particularly in Saskatchewan. Uh, the pandemic has caused a lot of rift between family members, uh, communities, the province, and I believe the government had a hand in that. I was the only MLA out of 61 that questioned the pandemic or the handling of it and consequently kept my office open. I had people walking in. I was so busy, I had to hire more staff. Uh, other MLAs chose to close their offices and sometimes even their phones. But if, if constituents from around Saskatchewan actually was able to get a hold of their personal MLA, sometimes they were ridiculed or laughed at. So I was the MLA for Saskatchewan these past two years. Consequently, I heard many, many sad stories stories of discrimination, uh, of sadness, of bewilderment, because we had a very good life in Saskatchewan for many years. My grandparents came here and settled from Europe. And I think they would be horrified to see what their granddaughter is fighting for today, our freedoms. So I thought this petition for the Commission of Inquiry would be something I could do to hold the government accountable, to be more transparent, to tell the people about the social outcomes uh, that the government wants. We know uh, we want good hospital, good infrastructure, education, justice system, um, but we've become very unproductive. And so I'm just asking the government some questions as to how did you come to uh, look at all these, these um, things that have become harmful to the people of Saskatchewan. Uh, they were subject to numerous emergency medical health orders and mandates. Is it, is it mainly that the government's handling of the pandemic, like the, the restrictions, the lockdowns, the masking, all of that? Is that kind of what you're that, looking that, for? That's correct, yes. Okay. I was just thinking back over the thousands of stories that I've heard from children not being able to be children and even going to school to seniors who died alone, we weren't able to bury our dead. These are the stories that are coming through to my office. And it's not the stories I want to hear or that I wanted for Saskatchewan for the future of our children and the yet unborn children yet to come. So we have to have an investigation into if there was an existing provincial emergency plan in place and whether it was followed and what happens in the future. I think our our Saskatchewan government needs to apologize to the people in order for them to move on. There's a lot of hurt and angst and the people just want to be recognized that their feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And they, then, then perhaps they can move on. Mm -hmm. Now, Nadine, I understand that you are now sitting as an independent in the legislature. So what happened there? And was it because you opposed Premier Moe's lockdowns? I did, and I, I opposed um, what I thought was perhaps a moral decay of the provincial government. I don't think they should know anything about my body autonomy. That, that was the last straw. That's something that should be between me and my family physician, what I do with my body. 
And so I thought I could no longer follow with good conscience the mandates of, of this government. So I walked away and Premier Mo accepted my resignation. And now I sit in opposition. So I'm able to ask the government pertinent questions and written questions, go into some debates and uh, investigate the government response to the COVID-19 pandemic in its entirety. So that's where I am today. Uh, I'm the lone independent of Saskatchewan, but this petition for commission of inquiry, anyone who lives in Saskatchewan and is over the age of 18 can sign it. They can go to my website, Nadine Wilson MLA website, and sign it and send it in and we'll show the government how many people would like to have this inquiry. Okay, it's not that you need a certain number of signatures, you're just hoping to get as many as you can. That's right, to give an awareness, to bring some hope to the Saskatchewan people who feel like they've been forgotten. I'm sure that you've been ridiculed by your fellow MLAs. It's a real learning experience on human behavior. I've, I've learned so much. And of course, I've lost friends, but I've also gained some really, really great people who have my back. And we are diverse. And I think that's something we have to remember as well. We can't be um, judgmental because everyone is at a different place and the line in the sand. So I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Now, Nadine, your website has the phrase advocating for unity and inclusion of all citizens. So that seems pretty straightforward and like a Canadian philosophy, but it isn't always the case for every public policy, is it? No, it isn't. Um, governments do what they feel is, is best for the people and most governments uh, provide transparency as well, which allows the public to understand the information and they, they hold town hall meetings. And it hasn't been that way for the last two years. So I would like to see the public more engaged with their politicians so the politicians understand what the people want and need in order to move forward for themselves and their families. Okay, uh, maybe tell us about the petition and what you hope to accomplish once you get uh, enough signatures or, or as many signatures as you can? Well, we want to discover what influence other governments, the health stakeholders may have had in formulating the decisions. We want to learn lessons and to make recommendations about similar events that can be better handled in the future, evaluate how vaccine injuries were reported and monitored, and uh, treatment for vaccine injuries. Uh, there's been uh, a few different ideas floating out, and I think everything should be explored. But the primary purpose of the inquiry was to uh, ask, if, was there an existing provincial emergency plan in place and whether it was followed? Okay, yeah, fair enough. And uh, Nadine, what, is the, what, what has the last three years shown you about the importance of civic engagement? more people should be engaged and that the government should listen to the people. It's been a very frustrating, painful process these last few years. It's been lonely, very lonely for people. It almost feels like we've been socially torn apart and we have to, may I use the word unify again? We have to unify the people and bring them back together. Um, we are social animals. And alone, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that you got tons of phone calls. I'm sure the stories that you heard were were pretty horrific, some of them, I would imagine. They, they were heartbreaking, yes. Um, we've had children who have given up and committed suicide. It's very hard for those parents to forgive the government, let alone forget. And that's why we need this healing process to start. So we can become this wonderful province that we once were. Mm -hmm. Now, how can elected representatives be better equipped to listen to their constituents and to take action on their behalf to support a better life? We always have to remember we were put here by the people for the people. It's not the other way around. We are the servants of the public and we need to listen to them. Yeah, well said. 
Uh, so what's one thing that perhaps uh, maybe even the first step that you think needs to take place in Saskatchewan to begin this healing process? How can we move onward and upward? I think the Saskatchewan government has to acknowledge that the citizens are hurting and to ask for their forgiveness. And how do we move on from this? Ask them what do they want? Mm -hmm. Uh, now, if anybody wanted to check out that uh, petition or sign, uh, you mentioned it's on your website, so nadinewilson.ca. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today, Nadine Wilson, uh, MLA for Saskatchewan River. It's so great to have you on. Well, thank you for, for the time. I really appreciate it, Jeanette, and maybe we'll speak again. Absolutely. So if you want more information about that petition that's available for Saskatchewan residents to sign, you can visit nadinewilson.ca. I'm Jeanette Roche on behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News. Thanks so much for watching.